rolled with a slug in there and it'll smooth it. Yeah, I saw that. Now, super easy, we see fuel pressure and... You see boost? No ignition. Huh? No ignition. Yeah, the whole dash. No ignition? No. no. You gotta prime it. Just prime it. Start it. No starter. Huh? You don't have a starter. This neutral lockout works. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. Okay. Alright. I know when to stop. Go ahead. Ignition on. Crank it? Yep. Watch this. In one. Very good. It's pretty, that's a pretty badass cold start for M1. Usually it's chug a chugging for a bit, but. It just works? Yeah. And you have twin sets of 2600s in it? Two sets yes. of 2600s? Yeah. Idles off one set, and the other set's staged. It doesn't come on until like whenever it needs it. And is it a blending thing, or is it yeah. just like a hard? It's kind of like the factory direct injection 2018 stuff. So you have blending control over the primary yeah. and secondary 2600s? Boost, Boost and RPM. Boost and RPM. Yeah. Wow. And full pressure. So you can log uh, primary and secondary duty cycle on these injectors? Yep. Wow. Yep. Through the Motec. Through the Motec. Wow, very yeah, cool. I can set up alarms too, so we can feed it through the CAN bus and have it spit out something on the dash okay. if you wanted to. Or it's just, it alarms you. So when you're looking at the log, you know, hey, you're 90% duty cycle or 80%. What were you able to control besides the injectors having the Motec that you didn't have control of before? Um, or was it just simplifying the... That was the main part, as we were getting into the secondary injectors and doing it with how we are doing it through the AMS 2000, it was batch fire, so it's spraying all of them at the uh, same time. Okay. And it, it's hard to control because then you're relying on the fuel trims to pull trim out okay. to unload the primaries. This doesn't do that. It just blends it in. Like factory? Like, like factory would be. Like and it, Ford factory. It's just kind of seamless. So is it, it, is it, it weird to kind of like be able to have that adjustability? It is a little weird. And then be able to live tune, like most of the, we, we tuned this mostly last Monday for probably, you know, four hours. Just, it, and it was only like four tune revisions because a lot of it was just me doing it live. And it started off pump gas with the 1300s. Do you think that was the key though? Yeah, well for me to learn it a little okay. bit better. But now that I know all that, we could probably start with, you know. I don't know if that dash is going to be weird. No, it's good. It's not on the ground. Okay. All right, let me talk to Senior about the whole wiring situation. So, Senior, if you don't mind me grabbing you for a little bit. Um, obviously, you switched over to MoTeC. How much of a process was it to go from a stock Gen 2 ECU to a, to a MoTeC? Because it is a plug-and-play unit for Gen 2. It's a plug-and-play unit for 15 to 17 Gen 2 manual. Oh, a manual setup. There is one for the automatic. Motec is still testing that. They had this one. It's a little bit older harness, so you have to go in and deep in a lot of things to um, free up some analog sensor uh, inputs. And we added eight more injectors, so we had to free up some of the uh, 
half bridge um, pinouts in the M150, but because we came from a basically a coyote swap PCM setup for performance, I had to blend that harness plug and play to to the factory harness, the two Tricor 1791 connectors okay. into the Motec. That process, I had to go through every single <laughs> pin from firewall, outside of firewall to inside the firewall to the factory harness. Wow. The factory harness flows to the M150 harness and make sure I had continuity on all of it. So how was it, did you have to integrate anything specific with the Motec and the 6R80 hardware-wise or wiring-wise? Since it was a manual harness, I had to completely make my own 6R80 harness. Oh, you switched harnesses because exactly. you couldn't use the 6R80 harness. Right. Gotcha. So the, the 6R80 portion of the setup goes directly to the M150. It goes into a solid-state box that controls all the solenoids. Okay. And then directly into the M150. I bypass the OEM harness. Wow. Okay. Now... <clears throat> What were some of the differences that you noticed how the car runs um, in terms of stock ECU, even just idles, starts? Like, what, what, what were some of the things that allowed you to notice, okay, this is different? So, starting with data logging, just a basic Ford ECU, tri core ECU, is about uh, 10 hertz, about 10 samples a second for okay. all the parameters. And then 150 is 100. Okay, 10 times 10 the sampling rate. 10 times the sample rate, which also means the controller itself and the computer controls the engine at a 10 times faster. All the sensors are 10 times faster. Even the factory sensors, OSS, TSS on the transmission, we're picking up signal variations 10 times faster. We're seeing 22 RPM slip in some of the clutches that we would never even know about or see. On a stock ECU. On a stock ECU. 22 RPM is nothing. At this power level, though, it tells us that know if we're potentially going to have an issue down the road in, in the direct or the Ford or the intermediate clutches. And did the Motec clean anything up in terms of wiring? Like did, did it did it allow you to pare certain things down? So I took the factory front O2s out because I needed to free up on my bulkhead wiring for the eight injectors. So it's two wires per injector so I needed 16 uh, well, they share a, a, a power wire, Okay. so I needed eight, and I split it off to two powers. So I needed ten more wires to plug into on my bulkhead. Well, the front O2s I don't use anymore because we're using Motec system, and that's all ran off the CAN bus. So but you do have wide bands somewhere. We do have wide bands. Uh, oh! NTK 4.9, super, super awesome, very fast wide bands that lead up to a little control box that's called a LTCD NTK box. It's actually a small computer, has memory, connects to a CAN bus. Power, ground, high, low CAN. Oh, wow. The Motec system can monitor a factory CAN bus. That's why the 18 GT still has a working dash. It's working to the factory the stuff. The OBD port still works on that car. The key fob, you can everything. You plug Forescan in and still play with the dash through Forescan, even though it has a MoTeC computer, because it's all sharing the factory CAN bus. Wow, okay. But it also has two more CAN buses. It has CAN 2, CAN 3, which is its own proprietary CAN bus that MoTeC has on that computer. So EGTs, because we don't want any signal variation, they're on their own canvas. Wow, okay. Everything else, um, some other sensors are on another canvas. So question, because I'm just looking at something real quick that's very obvious. Why stay drive by wire if you have the ability to go cable? Because the Motec system does such a great job controlling it. And this throttle is a, a custom throttle from um, Edelbrock or Nick Williams? Uh, Nick Williams, and it has an extra large throttle motor because we had some problems with high boost and the boost pushing back on the throttle. Uh -huh. So got all that fixed, and it works. Does it have dampening between the throttle body and the plasma man? No. Any? No. 
and you fix the potential vibrations that would shut throttle another way, let's just say. Correct. It's all done with the motor now. Wow. With okay. The, with the bigger motor. Because before you had issues just right. staying open now, because of the vibration. This, is, this logic is more what would be referred to as pedal following. So this feels snappy like, like, a, cable. Um, like a cable like a yeah I, like, there's no delay like an oem setup so there is no throttle area per se there is not per se but it is a torque based system okay if you have to torque in the v table off the throttle is going to fill so same as a, as a factory ecu yeah. you're referencing torque it's just time. a little bit more forgiving on the standard understood very cool and i see and i was talking to junior about this the fact that you have dual 2600s and they blend you can actually take individual a primary secondary uh, duty cycle right. and log that yep. and then you know how much you're stressing out the primary versus right. the secondary and you can tell it when to pick up when to start blending like a boost number or a hertz RPM, number or whatever duty cycle any combination wow okay so now uh, traction control uh, let's talk about what the Motec traction control now this I saw that in the rear end you had a pickup like a little drive shaft sensor is that something where you plot a curve and that then was like for the davis t3 system that sensor is not hooked up oh it's not hooked up don't need to because the m150 monitors oss and tss it already has the information but where is it grabbing tss is what because uh, oss is output shaft speed tss right. is turbine speed turbine speed oh wow that's how the slip logic works yes like a 10r80 right which oem doesn't have on a 6r oem does have on the 10r Motec has it on the six, and that is what it uses for not only torque management but tra uh, traction control. Traction control, but we did have to make that system work. We did have to add a uh, front wheel speed sensor. I was gonna say, how is, how does it know? And that bolts through um, the TBM brake system, and it's through Motion Race Works, and you see the sensor right there, and it's a very high resolution sensor bolts onto that. This system was already ready for it. You can see the the uh, pickup wheel. A little reluctor. Yep. Oh, so it has reluctor yeah. holes. And you have to tell it how many holes it has so yep. it knows how many super, revolutions. Super sensitive. Again. High resolution. 100 hertz. Oh, wow. So the sampling rate is really fast. Yeah. So not only could you dial in traction control, you can actually dial in, um, well, you can see the slip, like you said, at a very fast rate. But because it's 6R80, that is probably best to see where your actual slip is happening, right? Because you do one shift, it's a two-speed mm -hmm. 6R80. Um, we haven't done a you know, run in it yet, but based on the spool time and all the adjustability, do you think it'll have more gain in terms of ET, or do you think it's just more better monitoring, better processing? Because I see you have factory coils, you still have a lot of the yeah, quote-unquote factory stuff. Coils, although the coils do run through um, a MoTeC um, each set, four and four, go through their own small box, conversion box. Um, and there's a little bit of uh, extra juice that those give, although a Predator coil is Badass. awesome. Yeah. We were prepared to stick uh, IGM ones in it, which you, know, you can mount on your right. roll bar and you have the, the coil wire and all that. These are like 55, 58,000 joules. They're now kicked up to about 61, 62. We're limited by amperage on what we can kick an OEM coil up to. I think at the ask Junior, maybe nine or 10 amps. With MoTeC, it goes high as 20 amps. On that coil? Yeah, we uh, won't. That was <laughs> we won't, but we've also uh, done a lot of um, consulting with Tony over at T1, mm -hmm. because he's still, he's making 3,500 horsepower on an OEM style GTR coil pack wow, wow. that's similar to this on Pure M1. And you are running Pure M1 finally as opposed to what 60%, 70% you were doing before? Um, we had gone up to 70, we went back to 50. Right, because we were just running out of uh, injector. We had the secondary injectors in, but it was very rudimentary how we were controlling them through the AMS, very uh, on off. It was hard to get the blend and it would over fuel. Okay. Um, but now you have control, fixed. yeah. Now we have total control of that. Um, we're, we're able to log everything in one spot. We got EGTs. We got all the CAN bus stuff talking to the AM dash, which is a slightly different protocol. We have it working with the M150. We kept our AMS 2000. 
We have it controlled by the M150 for activation instead of using the boost logic, which is very good in M1 in, in, in MoTeC, but we have a lot of capabilities with that, some that the MoTeC doesn't, and we're able to blend all that together. Goals obviously would be go quicker, but eventually you're going to run into some limit, whether it's chassis, whether it's something. Right. We have to be careful because literally this could be a 27, 2800 horsepower engine right now. Right. If I had a turbo 400 behind it, it could handle that. I'm I'm not confident that the 6R, 6R can handle 23, 2400 for short spurts. I'm in no man's land past right. that. And I don't want to be going 200 mile an hour when it decides to let go. Or find a limit. Or find a limit. So we're going to push it up to where we're hopefully in the, in the mid 650s, maybe low 650s, relatively easy. We're up on power purely because the M1 right. cools the engine, EGTs are down a couple hundred degrees per cylinder. It's making gobs more power and more torque. It already spooled quick because we had VCT on the intake. We still have VCT, uh, yes, sir. Intake. Mm -hmm. Still works. Works great. Um, and it'll be a Texas 2K. It'll be a Texas 2K. We have a new little knob on the dash. What's the knob? It's a 10 position switch for MoTeC. This guy right here? That guy right there. And what, not to say that you have like map 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, yes. but. <laughs> Any so, combination of things that you want to change if we ran the boost control. Traction, power, traction, ramp. Power, ramp, two step. Everything. Everything. And you can change that. So I can come up on the line and the first two cars in front of me blow the tires off and Junior goes three. Know, hey, position put it three on four, or... put it on five. Or he reaches and does it himself. Right. That's cool. So that so if you guys want to see this car, you're gonna be a Texas 2K, hopefully get a test or two in before that because it's coming up pretty fast in about um, 15 days or something yeah, like that. Weeks. So hopefully you guys get to see him out there and say hi. We're running on a, a MoTeC system, which was vetted by that guy, which that guy was vetted by the car that you saw outside on another video that I talked to Junior on. But hopefully we get to see Senior at tx -Suket. Anything else you want to say, mention, anything else that you... Uh... I'm good. Thanks. Cool. Perfect. Thanks for talking. All right. See ya.